Hey there, everyone, and welcome to another edition of TJ's Reef. This episode, we're going to be talking about pff and why pff is so important in your tank. Now, before we get started about pff, what? What? Excuse me one second. It's, it's what? It's not pff? It's pH? So, we're going to be talking about pH today. Hey there, everyone. Welcome to another edition of TJ's Reef. As always, I'm your host, TJ, and this episode, we got the reef back there. Um, quick update on the tank. Everything's going really well. Uh, nothing disastrous lately. We're fighting some green hair algae, and we are slowly, ever so slowly, winning the battle. I think I'm going to cover that in a future episode. Uh, where we talk about how to beat green hair algae uh, in your tank and what causes it in the first place. So we've got that going on, which is boom, good. But this episode, we're going to talk about pH. Now, what is pH? Uh, it's a scale. It's a scale from 1 to 14, with 1 being acid and 14 being base. And what you need to know about that scale is where we should be with our reef tanks. Now, natural seawater is basically right about 8.2 on the pH. Now, our tanks should be, generally speaking, because there are exceptions, generally speaking, we should be around 8 to 8.4. That's the range that most reefers would agree upon for uh, their tanks as, as far as pH. Now, how do we monitor pH? How do we regulate pH? What causes pH to go up and down? And why do we even care about pH? Well, we're gonna get into that in just a second after you click, that's right, subscribe, the little bell icon down below. Thanks very much for watching TJ's Reef. Now, how do you measure pH in your tank? There are a number of different ways for you to do this. The most common one is just with a simple test kit. Uh, one of the first test kits most fish or aquarium owners buy is for pH. It's very simple. You get a little test tube of water from the tank, you add a couple of drops of, of a reagent, and it's going to swing in color. Uh, and depending on the kit, it might be reds or oranges or yellows or greens or where you want to be, but you'll have a little chart and you compare it to where, you, uh, where the colors match up. It's pretty simple. Now, other more sophisticated uh, devices can monitor pH constantly. I mentioned in my review of the Senai device, which you can check out up there, um, that it monitors pH, and that's a constant monitoring device. There are other constant pH monitoring devices out there for you as well to use. Now, why does pH matter in a tank like this? Is it over this shoulder or this shoulder? I have no idea. The tank back here. Two major reasons, and one of them many of you may not even heard about. Uh, the first one that is more common in the reefing world is that it helps with the calcification process of your stony corals. So pH, uh, along with your calcium uh, and alkalinity, all three of those things work together to allow the corals to build their skeletons and grow. Okay. The other one might be a little surprising to a lot of you. Uh, it was to me when I first found out, is that a proper pH in that 8 to 8.4 range actually has an antiseptic quality to the water, which can help your fish and potentially other tank inhabitants fight off diseases. Now, that does not mean you can't get ick or anything like that. It just means that it, it's a better water quality to allow them uh, a little bit safer um, environment that some parasites may not be able to live on. I'm not exactly sure which parasites, but based on my research on reading on the subject and my years of reefing, that's the general consensus with the right pH is that it's an antiseptic prop property uh, to your tank inhabitants. So now that you know what pH is and what it should be about, what causes it to go high or low? 
You know, rarely does a reef tank go high in pH. I've never had my tank go high. And if anyone ever has had a tank go high on pH, I'm guessing it's due to them dosing improperly or a doser went out of control or something like that. Because one of the things that can raise pH is uh, dosing alkalinity solutions like Kalkwasser or something like that. That will slowly and temporarily raise your pH. And if you add too much, it may spike your pH or keep it raised for a little while. I've never had a pH that's too high. I do, however, suffer from something that a lot of Aquarius deal with, and that is low or depressed pH. Not sad, depressed, but low. And I suffer with that every year during the summer. Why? Because I live in fabulous Arizona, and I know you've heard me talk about this before, but with the house sealed up and we have a, a spray foam insulation house, which means it is as tight as a frog's butt, okay? To put it lightly. Maybe that wasn't lightly. Anyways, our house is really sealed up. So in the summer, there's no exchange of air. And I do have a fresh air intake on in my air conditioning unit, and it doesn't help. What happens is a buildup of carbon dioxide happens from respiration, just from the people living in this house, breathing, and Brick, who I'm not even sure if he's breathing at this point, but he's down there in case you're wondering. Anyway, with the house sealed up and four people in this house most of the time breathing and putting off uh, CO2, that causes the tank water to depress. I'm gonna show you something, uh, something I posted in the r to r forums. Take a look at this picture. This is what happened to my tank's pH when we went away for the weekend. You can see on the first day it was still pretty depressed, but in two days time, in less than 48 hours, my tank had fully recovered to a normal pH range with nobody in the house. That is how quick pH can change on you. It can change in less than a day. The other thing you may have noticed in that picture, and I'll show you another picture here in a second, is how it cycles. Do, 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 During the day it goes up, and then at night when the lights go off, it starts to go down. Now why is that? That's because, just like people, things in your tank are respirating or not respirating during the day or during the night, and so when your tank cycles, so does your pH. So that's what usually causes low pH, is you just have too much CO2 and you cannot get it out of the water. Uh, someone asked if they could just inject oxygen into the tank, which at first sounds like a great idea. But then one of the chemists in the online forum said, that's not the problem. It's not that there's not enough oxygen in the tank. It's that there's too much CO2 and it can't leave the water if the air around it is saturated. Okay, so now we realize we have a problem. We have low pH. How do we fix that? Well, we have a couple of options. The first one is what can cause high pH readings in the first place if used improperly, and that's by dosing your alkalinity. I dose alkalinity when mine gets too low. In fact, I'll be dosing right after this episode, and it will cause the pH to go up slightly, and it will slowly come back down. That's like a temporary fix, but it does work. For those of you with larger tanks or with um, high demand corals for alkalinity and calcium in that, you're probably constant dosing, so your pH is probably more regulated than a smaller tank like mine that doesn't have a lot of mature uh, corals yet. So dosing can help. The other thing, and probably the most common and easiest and least invasive way to raise your pH is to push fresh air into it to allow it to off gas. Now, how do you do that? The most simple way is to run a line from outside your home either to your skimmer so it has a fresh air intake on the skimmer or run an air pump to an air stone in your sump or somewhere in the tank to allow it to off gas uh, some of that CO2. That is what most people do. Hold on, time out. I actually didn't mention the easiest way. The easiest way is to just open a window in your house. That is the easiest. Now, because I'm in the summer mindset, 
That's why I stuck with the airline tubing or an air stone from the outside. Back to the show. Now for me, unfortunately, I can't. This tank, one of these shoulders, is in the middle of my house. And I have no way of running a line outside. And I don't have a basement because they don't do basements in Arizona if you weren't aware. So I'm kind of stuck. So I just live with a little bit of a depressed pH during the summer. And then during the winter, everything goes back to normal. One other cause for low, low pH is if you are starting a new tank and you introduce uh, inhabitants prior to the cycle, the nitrogen cycle being completed and your tank uh, cycling. If you introduce livestock while it's still cycling or hasn't finished cycling, it can cause an imbalance and cause your pH to plummet. So make sure for all you new reefers or anyone that's starting a new tank, make sure your tank is completely cycled before you put anything in and that will help with your sta uh, stability and your pH. Well, I hope this short but informative episode of TJ's Reef can help you out with your pH issues. As always, feel free to contact me down in the comments. Please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you're checking out our series on installing a new tank. Uh, we have one episode up, it's in the regular TJ's Reef stream. You can uh, check out that first episode right here about our new in-wall setup. And uh, another episode of that is gonna be coming out soon. There's some updates. So some interesting information that's been happening in regards to the new big tank build. So hopefully uh, you're enjoying that. If you have any other comments, questions, concern, feel free to reach out to us. Until next time, this is TJ saying, I need to check Brick's pulse. Boom.